If you're owed money but aren't getting paid, it's time to call the sheriffs. My name's Mr Griggs, my colleague and our enforcement agent. I'm here to issue a high court risk. I've got to do what I'm instructed to by the court. They're enforcement agents of the high court. And if a court's ruled in your favour, they're on your side. If the debtor doesn't want to pay... You currently owe £9,461.80. The law says the sheriffs can get you what you're owed. If you don't come to the door, we have to remove the vehicle off the drive. You're allowed a week to pay in full before it gets sold at auction. Whether it's a small company... Can I speak to person in charge, please? ...or a household name... We're here to see somebody from G4S. If they owe you money, <laughs> the sheriffs get it paid. I'm not going anywhere. You get in the coming here. We're not going to be waiting around like that. It needs to be done now. It's collected 42 grand. Coming up, things get heated at a car dealer's in East London. Oi, 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 pal. See if you can come in here and start bullying people. I'll get my pals here and we see who's going to bully who. But can Sheriff Ken Warby get them to pay the five grand they owe? The value of the goods is here. Did I not warn you earlier that this would happen? Estate agent Karen Vaughan was left on the brink of financial ruin after a building project went wrong. The snowball effect was catastrophic. I was over £20,000 further in debt. Enforcement agents Tommy Coyle and Craig Wilde track down a man who owes her money. But will he pay up? In Leeds, Michael Redman's house was left exposed to the elements after an insulation job was abandoned halfway through. It leaked, it was drafty, it was an ISO. You could actually look through the window frames out into the street. Sheriff Chris Pearson pays the company a visit. Can they take the heat? The boss in there. Can you get him on the phone for me? And when Lawrence and Kev visit a classic car restorers, the boss admits he's made a mistake in ignoring the court. The reason I didn't pay it was purely on principle. It's a chilly winter's morning in London, and enforcement agent Ken Warby is working his patch in the north of the city. His first job today is to pay a visit to a car dealership in Walthamstow. We're going to a place called BD Trade Sale Limited, and it's an individual that has taken them to court for just over four grand. BD Trade Sales Limited were taken to court by a Mr. Tarsum Kainth. He bought a second-hand car which broke down on the way home and was refused a refund. The company didn't defend the case, so Mr. Kainth won a default judgment, but he's never been paid. Now, including fees, the debt's just over £5,000. Ken knows that collecting money from car dealerships can be tricky. Different people owning different vehicles in the yard. Paperwork has to be got out and proof has to be shown. There's usually an argument there somewhere. What he doesn't know is that today's argument is going to involve not one, but two car dealerships. Blue Diamond Garages, that could be the one. No, BD Trade Sales is different. Hello. Hello. BD Trade Sales Limited. I'm here regarding a High Court writ of control. Uh, against BD Trade Sales from a Mr. Tarsum Kainth. Why you got the camera here? Because the camera can move yes. away. The man asks our camera to leave the forecourt before telling Ken that the case against the company is in dispute. This judgment is to be set aside and we've already appealed for that. It's to be set aside, is it? No, it's already set aside. Is it? Have you got any paperwork I can see? Yeah. Thank you. The man says the judgment against BD Trade Sales has already been overturned by the courts. But when he shows Ken the paperwork, it instead seems to show their application for a set-aside hasn't yet been successful. But then he comes up with a different reason not to pay. It's not his company. This debt is against BD Trade Sales, and uh, he is the MD of a company called uh, Blue Diamond. Blue Diamond is a different garage just down the road. But there's a reason why its boss is manning the BD Trade Sales office. They're brothers, and one owes the other one a debt. The man says that because his brother owes him money, he's given him all the cars on the BD Trade Sales forecourt. So now they belong to Blue Diamond Garages Limited. That would mean Ken can't remove them. But he's not just going to take his word for it. Unless they can provide money transfer proof that each vehicle on this site was sold from 
the defendant company to the brother's company, then we can remove the vehicles. Inside, the man does manage to produce invoices which appear to back up his story. But for Ken, it's still not enough. Because there are no actual bank transfers and no solicitors undertaking for one company to satisfy the debt to another company. Also, that, that, that's not around, so it all looks a little bit iffy. The man in the office has now got hold of his brother on the phone, so Ken talks to him to try to clarify the situation. You are the MD of BD Trade Sales Limited, are you? My instructions are to remove a vehicle or two from here to cover this debt. The boss doesn't want to pay. He too is claiming the cars on the forecourt belong to Blue Diamond, but Ken disagrees. Because we don't have anything in concrete from a solicitor, for example, saying that this is a, a bona fide debt and it needs to be paid in a certain way, we can remove vehicles. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. But on the basis of you saying you owe him loads of money and him saying the same, that isn't good enough. We have to have it properly documented. Yeah. That's not good enough, mate. It's not good enough. Un unfortunately, you've got a stance there. I've got a stance as well. Unfortunately, we were at an impasse. I'll just make the phone call, get a transporter on its way down here. And um, obviously, you do what you've got to do, my friend. And uh, I've got to do what I'm instructed to by the courts. Yeah, you just said that. Thank you very much. Cheers for speaking to me. True to his word, Ken makes a call to book a tow truck to remove cars. If I need you in E17, how long? That's all right. I might need it, I might not. The truck's now on standby, and Ken warns the man that if he has to call it, then there'll be extra charges. It seems to have the desired effect, as the man now says he'll try to get some money together on his brother's behalf, but not all of it. He does have the means to pay, I'm sure he does. He's saying I can pay part and part at the end of uh, this month, but uh, considering the value of the vehicles here, and we're only after around five grand, I want payment in one go. If it was a football match, it's like a one-all draw at the moment. You know, going into half time, it's like one-all. But I know we're going to come out strong in the second half and uh, um, get full payment, and win the game. Later in the program, move that camera for me. It all kicks off at BD Trade Sales. Why are you coming in here and start bullying the man? Why are you doing that for? And we find out whether Ken can get the money owed. Did I not warn you earlier that this would happen? No. The police would turn up, the transport would turn up, it'd be like a scene out of Beatles about, and here we are. If you've been ripped off and the person or company responsible refuses to pay you back, the first step is to make a claim in the county court. It's simple to do this online, for a small fee depending on the size of the claim. The court will review the evidence, and if it finds in your favour, the debtor will be ordered to pay up. If they don't, then for a further £60, the High Court will grant a writ, authorising the sheriffs to act on your behalf. If they're successful, you get all your money back. In the Midlands, enforcement agents Tommy Coyle and Craig Wilde are on their way to Solihull. They're looking to try to recover a debt resulting from a business deal gone sour. The judgment's against a Mr Alan Beale. It's a home address for just over £15,000, so uh, it's a lot of money. The money is owed to Karen Vaughan, an independent estate agent who also dabbles in property development. Her involvement with Mr Beale began when she was looking for a new project to invest her savings. I've done a few projects. I've bought land, I've done some refurbishments on properties. Um, and what I was really hoping to do is to actually do a build. Um, that was really the next stage, the, the natural progression for me. A suitable site in Wolverhampton had come up, perfect to build four houses. Karen could afford to buy the land, but needed help to see the project through so teamed up with a local builder, Alan Beale. I was providing the finance for the project and Alan was um, dealing with all the, the building aspects. I'd seen um, some properties that had already been built um, with Alan. Um, he's, uh, he's a likeable person. Um, he seemed very knowledgeable on, on what he was doing. So, yeah, I thought that we were starting a good working relationship and um, it was the start of things to come, really. Before they could buy the plot, the pair got surveys done and plans drawn up. 
But then the project started to drag, and Karen began to realise there was a problem. Alan was quite a busy person, and it would appear that um, he wasn't getting back to architects, um, solicitors, the vendor of the site, etc., within the timescales that they required. And eventually the vendor decided that he couldn't wait any longer. The seller pulled out and sold the land to someone else. That meant all their work so far was down the drain. Alan started to forward to me the invoices for the work that he'd instructed. For example, the architect, the site investigation works, etc. And I think it was at that point that the realisation hit that we were somewhere in the region of 20,000 um, in debt. Um, and those bills needed paying. So Karen paid them, all £20,000 of it. She assumed her business partner would chip in, but she was in for a shock. Alan's attitude was that we had set up a limited company and the idea of a limited company is to protect you personally from any debt if the company fails. He felt that there was no legal need to have to pay that debt and therefore if I wanted to pay them, that, that was my choice. Karen had been counting on the income from the completion of the project to honour other financial commitments and was now plunged into crisis. Personally, I was devastated that I was over £20,000 um, further in debt than I was to start with. The snowball effect um, financially was, was catastrophic. She missed loan payments and her business was nearly repossessed. So when she finally managed to persuade Mr Beale to pay back half of the money, it was a huge relief. He drew up a loan agreement and agreed to pay an amount each month to clear that debt. He made the first payment and so I thought everything was great, we were moving forward at last. Um, but unfortunately when the second payment was due, there was no money forthcoming. Despite phone calls, messages, texting um, and emails, um, Alan never came forward with any further payments. As he had broken a signed agreement, Karen was able to pursue him through the courts. She won a county court judgment against Mr Beale, and when he still didn't pay, took it to the High Court. I've given him every opportunity to make this payment, but he's ignored everything, and I've put it in the hands of the sheriffs. And I, I hope that this will sort of evoke some sort of response and make him see that this debt is not going away. Now Tommy and Craig are on their way to see Mr Beale and Craig is feeling confident. He is a director of four limited companies, building companies, a uh, log home company. He's obviously clearly a man of means, so uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll go and see Mr Beale and try and get uh, Miss Vaughan's money for her. At the house, there's no sign of a builder's van on the drive, but is Mr Beale home? Builder's boots. Hello, my love, sorry to disturb you. I'm trying to get in contact with Mr Alan Beale. Are you his wife, are you? No, I'm not his wife. My name's Mr Wilder from the High Court. Okay. If you can get him on the phone for me, I'm here to execute a court order. No, I Yes, no problem at all. I just want more no, not you, Tommy. No. I'm locked out. Craig's inside, at least. Uh, get some dialogue going. Inside, the woman tells Craig that she is Mr Beale's partner. As he seems to live there, the sheriffs could begin to list items to remove from the house to cover the debt. But it would be much better if Mr Beale could pay in some other way. So the woman manages to reach him by phone, and Craig fills Tommy in via the window. He's just phoned in. He's saying he hasn't got the money. Right. So we'll wait until he turns up anyway, because he's only about 10 or 15 minutes away. But there's another guy called Kevin turning up as well. Mr Beale's apparently on his way back to the house, so it looks like the sheriffs are going to get to speak to him face to face. After a short wait, a truck pulls up. Here we go. Mr Beale has arrived alone. He tells Tommy he can't afford to pay back his debt to Karen Vaughan and he hasn't brought any money. He doesn't want to be filmed and goes into the house. 
where Craig explains he's got a writ from the High Court that empowers him to remove goods to cover the debt. And after some fraught discussions, there are some promising signs. Craig's just come out now uh, and he just requested to get the card machine. It looks like Craig has managed to negotiate at least some kind of payment. Sure enough, before long, the sheriffs are on their way. So nearly 18 months after signing the loan agreement with Mr Beale, has Karen finally got her money? The defendant turned up, he couldn't pay, but uh, his partner decided to uh, extend the hand of uh, gratuity to him to get it paid off. So that's what she's done, £15,000, there you go. Another good day for the sheriffs, and another good day, hopefully, for Miss Vaughan. I have to say, I am actually surprised. Whilst I was hoping for a good outcome, I did not expect this. So, thank you, sheriffs. You've done an amazing job. I can't thank you enough. Sheriff Ken Warby is at a car dealer's in Walthamstow, where he's chasing a debt of £5,000. BD Trade Sales Limited sold a car to Tarsum Kainth, and when it broke down, didn't give him a refund. Ken is dealing with the director's brother, who says he's trying to raise the money, but after a lot of waiting around, Ken has run out of patience. I've just been kept waiting and fed a load of rubbish at the moment saying, give me five minutes, give me five minutes, I need to make a few phone calls. Nothing's happened. I'm going to phone the office now, organise a transport to come down, remove one or two of these vehicles. As Ken gets ready to make the call, the director's brother makes a last-ditch attempt to put on the brakes. These assets are my assets. They are blue diamond garages assets. Sorry, mate. I know, I know where you're coming from, but these, these, these are my assets. These cars, they, can't, they can't be lifted. But Ken's heard enough of this argument already. Hello, Wayne. It's Ken Wolby. Look, I need a transporter down in Walthamstow. If you could get down here as soon as possible. About 40 minutes. Nice one, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers. Bye. All the stalling has cost the debtor dearly. The fees sheriffs charge are set by the government. And now that the transporter is on its way, the final bill has shot up. £5,075 to, um, to a whopping £6,700 and counting. But no sooner than the call is made, the boss's brother says a friend is on his way with the cash. It is the larger amount now, unfortunately. I've called the transport, mate, it's on its way. It's just left the yard. Well, you just, it's, it's only been a couple of minutes, Mr. Mate, it's not, it's been like an hour and a half since that first five minutes, do you remember? Yeah. I did warn you, I had a coffee, we chatted, still nothing happened. The five minutes became an hour and a half. Enough's enough. Yeah, but he said that he can get you the five grand then. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, it's not enough now. It needs to be the full amount. Yeah, but you just called it a few minutes ago. It makes no difference. As soon as I tell the office they're not paying and uh, I need a transporter, these fees go on. Nothing can be done? No. The man said a friend was coming, and sure enough, one soon turns up. Only it doesn't look like this guy's in the mood to hand over any cash. I'm move the, your camera I'm from on, it. I'm on the street. Move your camera from there. Move! Oi, 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 pal. What are you thinking? You're going to come in here and start bullying people. I'll get my people here right now. Will you come here and try to bully the man? Huh? I'm not trying to bully you. Come here to bully the man. Mate, I'm not trying to bully you anybody. Pal's here. Uh, move that camera from here. Move that camera from here. I'm on the public street. I'm on the public street. Move away from my friend. Ken has seen enough. Please, please. Someone has been physically threatening. He's just suddenly come into the car yard. I would like someone here to prevent the breach of the peace. I think they knew I was on the phone to the police and they, they, they've sort of like disappeared, so I'm in the car yard on my own at the moment. But not for long, as the men soon return. Move that camera away from me. Move that camera away from me. Yeah, that's it. Yes, sir. You Why are you coming in here and start bullying the man? Why are you doing that for? I'll get my pals here and we see who's going to bully who. If that's the way you want to do it. Is this gentleman just told you I was bullying him? Well, that's the, that's the, that's the no, approach you've come you. along. Oh, we're going to do that. We're going to remove cars. We're going to... Come on, mate. Can I just ask who you are? Khan, Mr. Khan. Mr. Khan. Mr. Khan. And what, what, what involvement listen, forget, is Mr. Listen, forget that. Forget that involvement. Yeah. Tell him to switch that camera off. Otherwise, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Listen, Tell him to listen, switch that camera listen, off. Listen, if you want, I can go talk to him personally. Mate, switch that off. Otherwise, I'll take that off you. 
Uh, I'll take that off you. Mate, you won't be doing right? that. No, 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 don't tell me that. Just as the situation is spiralling out of control, the police arrive and Mr Khan makes himself scarce. Meanwhile, the director's father has also arrived and he's brought cash. I am here to help them, to help these boys. My yep. The original bill is 5,000 something, 5,072. We are willing to sell it okay. because the drill is not here. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. The father is willing to pay his son's original bill, but not the extra fees which were added when the transporter was called. But as far as Ken's concerned, this is a situation entirely of their own making. I did explain to this person loads of times that if I had to call the transport, a lot of fees go on there. Yeah. I was patient over two hours, but in the end, enough's enough. I've called the transport yeah. and now a load of fees have gone on there. I can't reverse that. Did I not warn you earlier that this would happen? No, the police would turn up, the transport would turn up, it would be like a scene out of Beatles about, and here we are. We're able to settle it. The full amount. The full amount of the gentleman. No. The father isn't budging. I can pay you a little bit. The bill he has got. OK. He is not willing to accept that. That is what he's saying. Yeah. This is a con, isn't it? It's a big con. The is not here, nothing is here. Right? <gasps> but it will be here soon, and you've got sufficient goods in the yard to cover the debt. But the son still thinks these cars can't be taken. And now with the police in attendance, he's hoping he can convince them of his side of the story. You've got a high court rate for BD trade sales. Yes. So these cars, they belong to me. They belong to Blue Diamond Garages. That's what I was trying to explain for you, and you weren't listening. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. And yeah. so does this gentleman. Yeah. But it, what happens is he has been issued with mm -hmm. a court writ for yeah. these premises. For BD trade sales. OK. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. But these cars are here on this premises. You've got a big sign up there. If you've got 6,600 and whatever it is, then I would suggest you pay it. Then you can go to court. If it is proved in your favour, you will get reimbursed. If you choose not to pay back today, these guys can take the cars. With the policewoman delivering the final verdict, father and son realise the game is up. What we up? 6708, oh, just shy of seven grand, is what we said earlier on we needed to avoid. The father reluctantly agrees to pay and hands over the full total in cash. At the same time, the transporter arrives and is sent on its way. They think it's all over. It is now. Well, I did tell you earlier on, it was like one all at half time. But uh, um, two under the sheriffs. Much to the father's disapproval. This is very unfair system here because the court, the case is still in the court. But nevertheless, to finish this matter off, I didn't want any aggravation with no one. I paid the sheriffs. Now we will claim it back. The case never went back to court and Tarsum Kainth has got back the money he was rightfully owed. <laughs> Sheriff Chris Pearson is chasing a debt owed by a businessman specialising in green home improvements. We're in Leeds today, we're off to see you, Mr James Khan. It's for a sum of £1,587 owed for, which I believe is insulation, which is either incorrectly fitted or it wasn't fitted at all. Mr Khan runs a company called the Green Deal Warehouse. It sold the insulation to pensioner Michael Redman, who lives in the Cookridge area of Leeds, a place where to stay warm, you need all the help you can get. We're at one of the highest points in Leeds. We get a lot of fog, get a lot of wind, it's horrendous up here when winter comes. We can have snow up here when you can go a mile down the road and people are walking around in T-shirts. It is so cold in winter. And it's not just the elements which the residents have to contend with. Much of the post-war housing here is poorly insulated and can't easily be improved. Houses are solid wall. There is no cavity, so you can't put insulation in between inside. Which is where a special type of insulation called thermal cladding comes in. It involves adding a whole new shell to the outside of the house. It's like wrapping your house in um, a rather large blanket. Hoping to keep his house warm and cut down his bills, Michael decided to buy thermal cladding from local company, the Green Deal Warehouse. 
we had a choice of two firms that we could have gone with and we just decided to go with the first telephone number, which happened to be Green Deal. And now we wish we hadn't. <laughs> the job meant also replacing his doors and windows and the work got off to a good start, but the progress would prove to be short-lived. We paid a £1,000 deposit. It came out within a week to fit the new windows and doors. They said, we're coming back to do the insulation, the scaffolding and everything within the next fortnight. And that was the last time we saw Green Deal Warehouse for five months. And it wasn't for lack of trying. Michael called time and again to try and arrange for the main work to begin. They kept telling us that the scaffolding was going to be coming next week. Never came. Ring up again, coming in another week's time. Never came. And it went on and on. In the meantime, the windows and doors had been left half finished. So, far from keeping the heat in, the house was colder than ever. You could actually look through the window frames, not the glass, out into the street because there were rather large holes and a lot of expanding foam. It leaked if it rained, it was drafty, it was an eyesore. <laughs> After months of phone calls and missed appointments, Michael finally had enough and made one last call to the boss of Green Deal Warehouse, James Kahn. I said, I'm cancelling it. And straight away, Mr. Khan says, you'll not get your deposit back. I says, I'm not going to argue with you. I'll see you in court and put the phone down on him. I think Mr. Khan thought I was joking. But after spending a thousand pounds and five months exposed to the elements, this was no laughing matter. Michael got another company to complete the work and took the Green Deal warehouse to the county court. Although Mr. Khan did offer a defence, he missed the hearing, and judgment was found against him. He was ordered to pay Michael back his deposit plus costs. Not that it seemed to make any difference. He just wouldn't pay. Never saw a penny. He just totally ignored it. Which left Michael with few options other than to turn to the sheriffs, something which he had no qualms about doing. It's the right thing to do, and I'm not, I'm not that type of person what, what's going to uh, sit back and let him get away with it. Sheriff Chris Pearson is on his way to the Green Deal warehouse to try to get Michael his money back. And as a fellow northerner, he has every sympathy with Michael's insulation nightmare. Well, where I live, it's on the coast. It's not too bad. You come to the hilly districts, you can get the snow up to two to three feet deep. It can get a bit cold as well, to say the least. So if we're looking to get your, your property, your home insulated, it's got to be done correctly, I would say. As Chris arrives, the business is open and production seems to be in full swing. But is Mr Khan here? Hello, Ed. Hello. Is the boss in there, please? You stop here, yeah, cheers. Is Mr. Khan in, please? Not mate, no. Can you get him on the phone for me from the High Court? He's up here, mate. Can you get him on the phone for us, mate? We're Upstairs in the office, Chris explains the purpose of his visit. There's been a writ issue, we'd love to see his company assets. Uh, it's not for a great deal of money, and I'm sure we'll resolve it straight away. The staff offer to contact the boss, but they don't want our camera in the office. Could you all just go downstairs five minutes? Absolutely, I'll yeah. wait down here, yeah, yeah, no problem. But once downstairs, our cameraman's asked to leave altogether. Chris remains inside to negotiate and soon emerges to fill us in on what's going on. The actual debtor himself is not there. Apparently he's away on holiday, but they are trying to get in touch with them at the minute. So hopefully, within a couple of minutes, we'll get in touch with him and get this paid. Until they can get hold of him, there's no guarantee he'll agree to pay up. But if he doesn't, Chris is confident he's got plenty to fall back on. Fort lifts, windows, cars, there's all sorts in there. Hopefully they'll pay, but if they don't, there seems to be more than enough to cover the debt. 
Back inside, the staff manage to make contact with Mr. Khan abroad and break the news that a High Court Sheriff is on the doorstep. Mr. Khan says that the case is still in dispute, but Chris explains that he's got a High Court writ, and so the debt to Mr. Redman needs to be paid now. Soon enough, Chris is heading back to his car. So what's the news? Mr. Khan was away on holiday, but managed to contact him by phone, and he's agreed to pay the full amount. It's a textbook job for the sheriffs. That was one of the better ones. Yeah, if they could all go like that, it would be fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, they don't. Michael Redman will now get his lost deposit back. We've received a cheque for the total of £1,246.73. And I think they've done a superb job for us. The Green Deal warehouse told us the work on Mr Redman's house was subject to a voucher scheme and was delayed due to a government backlog in processing the applications. Mr Redman was offered a number of start dates which he refused because they weren't convenient. The company says it was unable to attend the court hearing due to work commitments. And the reason they didn't pay the debt is that they never received the letter from the court. Sheriffs are now officially known as High Court Enforcement Agents, and they'll collect the money you're owed. My job is to collect in full or remove goods. They've got more powers of entry than bailiffs. We don't have to take any notice of your security protocol, I'm afraid. And there's no limit on the size of the debts they can pursue. £1.6 million. Pounds. Their fees are set by the government, which debtors have to pay on top of what they already owe. Thank you very much. See you later. If the sheriffs can't recover any of your money, there's a fee of £75 plus VAT. In the Midlands, enforcement agents Tommy Coyle and Craig Wilde are heading into the countryside on a job which will pose some unique challenges. We're off to see a company called Stone Ridge Vehicle Sales. Balance on the account is just short of £3,500. The claimant successfully took Stone Ridge vehicle sales to court after buying a car which turned out to be faulty and was refused a refund. The company didn't defend the case, so judgment was issued in default, but there's still been no payment. The sheriffs are now headed to the company director's house, which is the only address they've been given. Done our research, it's a large manor house, uh, grade two listed, uh, currently in the market for 1.3 million but it's not clear whether the business trades from the house or not. And just because it's an expensive property, that won't make it any easier for the sheriffs to get paid. If it was the individual's name on the writ, then obviously he would own items within the house, so we'd be pushing the point trying to get inside the house. Uh, but with this, we're just after business assets. So it makes it a bit more difficult. Oh, there we go. That's, that's it there. That's it. Two expensive-looking cars are on the driveway, and a courtyard behind the house looks promising too. Is the cars in there as well? I think so. On closer inspection, he's right. Yeah, there's loads of cars in there. The question is, are they owned by the company they're looking for? To find out, they'll have to run checks on the registration numbers. So they start taking them down. R I. R what? R I zero two. Some of the license plates are out of view. To get a closer look, they might have to scale the wall. But they don't want to alert the occupants of the house until they've got the information they need. They're going to see me up the window, isn't that? So, up goes Tommy. M44. M44. And Craig takes down all the registrations Tommy can see. couple more in a little garage there. There are certainly a lot of cars for one house, so it's possible they could belong to the car sales business. But until they get them checked out, they won't know for sure. Now they need to try to make contact with the debtor. This is the Vodafone voicemail centre. The intercom system seems to be diverting to a telephone's voicemail. Let's keep trying it. There, there, that's... So now the sheriffs need to get insistent. As they're legally entitled to jump perimeter walls, over they go. 
We'll drop down a bit, mate. Come on, son. <laughs> you can do it. Things you do. <sighs> they then try the front doorbell, but there's no answer there either. Hello? Hello? Nobody coming to the door. Uh, I mean, you could say they're in bed because it's a huge manor house. Uh, but obviously the, the bell we're ringing echoes through the house, so I'd say they know we're here. Uh, but no one wants to come to the door. Would you come to the door? I mean, you'd certainly come to the window, wouldn't you? With no one answering, the front gate's locked shut, and without yet knowing who owns the cars, the sheriffs are running out of options. Very difficult what we can do here this morning. Uh, we gathered a lot of information, took a lot of reg plates down in the courtyard which we'll DVI check and HBI check. They come back to our company now. We'll, we'll come back and have them. Uh, we'll give it a couple more knocks and then unfortunately we'll have to leave a letter to that. Which is exactly what they do. Checks later showed that the cars weren't registered to Stonebridge vehicle sales. Shortly afterwards, the company was dissolved. That means that it no longer has any money or assets. And on this occasion, there's nothing more the sheriffs can do to get the claimant's money back. The boss of Stone Ridge Vehicle Sales told us he made every effort to settle the matter before it went to court. He offered to inspect the car, but the claimant wouldn't return it without being refunded first. And he says he missed the court date because of an administrative error. In the southeast, enforcement agents Lawrence Grix and Kev McNally are in Kent, and their prospects of getting paid today are looking pretty good. The company they're going to is definitely still trading, and it specialises in classic car restoration. We are in Ashford. We're going to Extreme Jaguar Restorations Limited. They are £3,161. They soup up and restore old Jaguars. Extreme Jaguar was taken to court by a supplier, and unlike many of the sheriff's jobs, this time the debtor won't be able to claim they never got the paperwork. Mr Gannon, who is the director of Extreme Jaguar Limited, he was actually in court to defend the hearing with his solicitor. He's not going to be able to say he's not aware of this. Mr Gannon didn't pay what he was ordered to by the court, and now the sheriffs are heading his way. One of them in particular can't wait, not because of the money, but because of his love of cars. I'm very much looking forward to this one. I do like my Jags, always have done. Got one about a year ago. Mine is like a metallic British racing green. I couldn't tell you, well, I could tell you the exact colour, but they're a bit, bit, bit geeky. I've always loved the shape of the Jag. There's just something about them. Never seen him as excited about a job. Probably as good as it gets, to be honest with him. As for getting paid, the Jaguars themselves are likely to be out of the equation. What we're going to find here, I would imagine, is most of the actual cars belong to customers. Parts and tools is the main thing we'll be looking for. But will they need to take anything, or will the garage pay up? Time to find out. Hi there. Hi there. How are you doing? Fine. All right, enforcement yeah. agents. We've got a high court writ against Extreme Jaguar Restorations Limited. We're ordered here today to take control of goods to the value of £3,161.14. and 14 pence. At this point, our cameraman's asked to leave. Inside, Lawrence tells Mr. Gannon that the outstanding debt needs to be paid today. Shortly afterwards, our cameras let back in only to find Lawrence and the owner talking shop. Ah. I've just built all oh, it's lovely. That is just gorgeous. I've got an X300. It's yeah. the last of the 3.2s because I wanted a straight six. I didn't want a V8. It's lucky it's the sheriff's last job of the day because they could be here for a while. So I've always, always loved Jags, always wanted one. And I thought for that money, just for something to poodle around in at weekends, I'm having it, you know. It's never going to be anything like this. So it's just showing Lawrence around the workshop at the moment. He knew Lawrence was pretty keen to have a look around here, so he's giving him a guided tour. And Lawrence is geeking him out of information over there, showing off that he knows a little bit about it. So I'll let him have his moment. He's loving it over there. 
back to the writ in question. Lawrence wants to know if any of these cars belong to the garage. I'm guessing these are customers' cars, aren't they? Yeah. They are, which means they can't be removed by the sheriffs or used as leverage to get payment. But it doesn't look like that will be necessary anyway. You can pay online with a card. We've got a secure online payment system. Yeah. Or you can go online and do a bank transfer. Mr Gannon is willing to pay £1,100 today and says he'll clear the rest of the debt tomorrow. There you go. Okay. Mr Gannon tells us his side of the story. He says the dispute arose from a respray job on an E-type Jaguar. The paint shop involved sent me a, a sample of the paint, which is this, and based on that being the correct colour, I sent the car to the paint shop to be resprayed. Mr Gannon claims that when the car came back, the colour wasn't right. So he refused to pay the full cost of the job and instead made an offer for part payment. He wouldn't accept it. We went to court. Sadly, the magistrate involved couldn't see the concept of how much it was going to cost to respray a complete E-type. She did, however, find in my favour and knock some off the bill, but nowhere near enough. She only knocked £1,000 off, and anybody who's in this industry will tell you you're looking at a minimum £6,000 to respray an E-type. The reason I didn't pay it was purely on principle. But the court made its decision, and Mr Gannon has tried to ignore it. As a result, he's now facing a higher bill with extra charges and fees. As he seems willing to pay, Lawrence and Kev are happy to leave with £1,100 for the time being. But they do list a couple of vehicles belonging to the company, just in case. Well, they've got outside, they've got a recovery vehicle, a uh, sort of seven and a half tonne van. And they've also got a transit van as well. So between the two vans there, there's more than enough to cover the little that's left owing. But I've got no doubt these guys are going to be paying in the morning. Right, this is your controlled goods agreement. Okay. The controlled uh, goods stop. agreement means that if Mr Gannon doesn't make the promised payment, the sheriffs will be back to take the vehicles. <laughs> All right, cheers. All right, thanks very much. Bye -bye. It's job done for the sheriffs. And the moral of the story is that a court's decision is final. The judge said, this is how much you've got to pay. So that, that's what we have to do. We have to enforce the writ. So we've taken what we could get today, which is £1,100. We've got a controlled uh, goods agreement signed for the full balance by close of business tomorrow. The guys have come today, they're just doing a job. So yes, I'm quite happy to pay it. And uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but I'll just have to chuck it up to experience. And for Lawrence, it's been a case of mixing business with pleasure. If I had to pick one from in here, that would be it. I mean. Oh, well, it'd have to be, yeah. I'd love to own some of the cars that are in there. But hey-ho, I've got my cheap old run around and that will do me. And I picked up a bit of advice while I was in there as well. So, happy days. Extreme Jaguar Restorations Limited paid the remaining balance and the paint shop got the money they were owed.